Hi, I'm Femi O'K and you're in the stream. Today in Israel, Jews discriminating against Jews. Is it because they're black? Ethiopian Israelis say that's what it feels like. This conversation started and got revved up internationally because of protests in Israel. The conversation is starting online here as well. Malika Balau is out. Omar Badai is in. What are you seeing, Malika? You know, for a lot of people who are not familiar with the context, the protests seem to have come out of nowhere. But we mm. asked people in our online community about the conditions that may have led to these protests. We have Jahangir here on Facebook who says African origin Jews are living in the worst conditions compared to their counterparts in ghettos. They are constantly under attack. Now, what that means is what we're going to explore during this show. But for those of you at home, you can tweet us using the hashtag that you see on the screen right now, AJStream, and we'll try to get to those tweets during the show. I don't really need to tell you this, but this show is so much better with your voice. Have a look here on my laptop. This is stream.aljazeera.com. One way you can get your voice into the show is by recording a video. You can also do this on your smartphone, your laptop, your computer. There's a little widget that you have to press here that allows you to record on whatever device you're recording on, and then you too and add your opinion to the stream. Hi, my name is Ran Bari Shafat. I'm a lawyer and an Israeli activist, and I'm in the stream. Racism and police harassment, that's what some Jewish Israelis of Ethiopian descent say they face every day. So, when a video went viral of police officers assaulting an Ethiopian Israeli soldier, Thousands protested in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. They say they don't want to be treated like second-class Jews anymore. Israel brought Jewish Ethiopians to the country in two covert operations in the 1980s and 1990s. Tens of thousands were airlifted to Israel, rescued from famine and civil war. They would help grow Israel's Jewish population, but when they arrived, they were forced into immersion ceremonies and require, not required of European immigrants. Israeli hospitals have thrown out Ethiopian Israeli blood donations. And Ethiopian women say in the past, Israeli doctors forcibly injected them with long term birth control drugs. Now, the government says those practices are over, and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu called on Israelis this week to stand together to eliminate racism. With us to discuss how this can happen, from Tel Aviv, Fentahun Asafa Dawit is director of the group Tebeka or Advocate for Justice. In Hazlia, Ashagur Araro is in university studying government and diplomacy. In Bathsheba, we have Ethrat Yerde, and she is a social activist and columnist with the blog The Hottest Place in Hell. And in Tel Aviv, independent journalist David Sheen. It's good to have you all here in the mix. I should say that David and Fentahoon have quite a significant delay, so they haven't lost interest in the conversation. It just takes a little while for them to hear what we're talking about. Welcome, everybody. Let me just start here with the Israeli soldier that really inspired so many of the protests. His name is Damas Pakada. Have a listen to what he says about the protests. I do support the demonstration. I am with them. I hope it will be understood that the Ethiopian community is part of Israeli society. So that's what the soldier who was in the viral video said, and you saw him earlier being beaten up by police officers. What was it about this moment, that video, Ashuga, that made so many Ethiopian Israelis go out on the street? Can you identify with, with what those protests were about? <coughs> Uh, I feel like the the video was very uh, open and everyone saw it. It was very viral. And once people saw it and identified themselves in the soldier, they felt like they have to speak out. <coughs> they have to do something in order to, those things to not happen again and raise the issue of uh, police uh, violence in Israel. For you, Afrat, when you saw the protests, you saw so many people seemingly spontaneously hitting the streets. How do you actually explain that to us watching outside of Israel? I think the, this video, is, it, it was the, the trigger for, for um, a rage that had been accumulated for, for a long time. And uh, every Ethiopian young man in Israel can, can identify himself, as Ashagar said, in this video. 
and specifically in this uh, IDF uniform, because uh, in Israel, wh when people uh, go to the army, it's kind of uh, it's kind of give them the credit to have rights. So maybe we'll we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit later. But uh, even when you give your your the things you need to give to your country, you go to the to the army and uh, pay taxes and everything, you still feel like a second class citizen. See, Eva, you said every young Ethiopian Israeli can identify with the video. Are you exaggerating a little bit? Perhaps are you really mean every young black Israeli understands what it's like? I, I don't think I'm exaggerating. All right. Because, uh, for example, my, my, I know I heard somehow that my brother, every time he see a police car, he need to check that his ID is on him in his, in his pocket. So it's something that white people in Israel, or maybe white people specifically from European origin, they, they don't feel it. They feel more safe when they see police. And, and my brothers don't feel safe when they see police. So it's different. And of course, it's, it, there, is, there is the Ethiopian community, and, I'm sh and there are people from, uh, from North African origin that also suffer from... Uh, from uh, police brutality, maybe it's it's hierarchical, but but the blacks they are the mo they, they are in the end of this uh, this uh, pyramid. Alma. So, I mean, for many people, the protests that we've seen over the past few days have been very very significant, but apparently not for everyone. You have Ruth here who says that the protests were not exceptionally big. There are protests every year or two for the same reason, and each time anger grows, but nothing changes. And then we have this video comment from Seth. Take a listen to this. One of the main problems we saw last week during the anti-racism and uh, police brutality protests was an almost total lack of support uh, from many of the left-wing NGOs and also I think a noticeable lack of support from left-wing members of Knesset and Parliament. And that's one thing they think is really absent in terms of support for the Ethiopian Jewish community. So, Fentahun, for you, how significant are these protests and how wide was support for it in Israeli society? These protests actually um, have taught us something that we didn't know before, as um, it is actually um, um, a remarkable uh, event where whenever you had these kind of uh, problems, whether it is discrimination, uh, social um, injustice or uh, anything else, uh, uh, people uh, might have uh, taken it into uh, to the streets and uh, mainly it happened with the uh, older generation who came out and protested. But this time these youngsters, uh, most of them also teenagers, for some uh, this is um, a way of uh, expressing the feeling, the frustration and uh, many of them who have gone through the same experience of uh, police violence against them or if not themselves they know someone who had gone through this whether it is a family member or uh, some friend uh, or relative. I want to show you something here on my laptop. Here we have Miss Israel. She is an Ethiopian immigrant. This is from 2013. And then another prominent figure that I've been seeing on the news recently. This is the deputy mayor of Tel Aviv. Again, came from an Ethiopian village, it says here in the headline, to deputy mayor. Oh, my, go ahead. You know, one of the things that came up pretty often online is the idea that there might be a hierarchy in Israeli society of how different people are treated. And we have Chantel here who tweeted in saying, yes, I do believe that there is a hierarchy. We are at the bottom in many places trying to climb higher, treated poorly and broke our backs to build the civilization. But, you know, in many other protests, there are sometimes like uh, famously people of Palestinian origin who are Israeli citizens who protested. Live fire was used and in one case there were many who were actually killed in the year 2000. And there was no live ammunition used in these latest protests. And I'm curious, uh, David, I'll direct this to you. Do you have a sense that the reason why there was no lethal force used against these most recent riots is because uh, lives are more valued today? Or was this a PR stunt? Or what is your read of it? Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's very true what you've said. There is a hierarchy of lives which are more important, which are less important. True. We didn't see any bullets being shot. And that's something that can't be said for protests by Bedouin Palestinian citizens of Israel 
and of course Palestinians who are not citizens of Israel, etc. Um, on the other hand, we did have tear gas, we did have uh, skunk water. We, you know, these are things that you almost never it's see at bombs. protests by Jews, whether it's settlers riding against the Israeli army or, or ultra-Orthodox. It's very, very, very rare to use gas against Jewish protesters, uh, for kind of for obvious reasons, because the association it brings up, at least here mm -hmm. in Israel. Um, but it was used at these protests, and that does say something about do black lives matter in Israel? Sadly, many would say no, and that's one example of the way that, that manifests. Efret, when you were there, when you were protesting, what is it that you wanted to get out of heading out there in the streets? I wanted that, that the, the authorities will realize that they can't ignore and they can't continue to marginalize the Ethiopian community in Israel, because this is what they did until now. And from now on, it, it won't be possible anymore. You can't ignore us. So from, from, from the one hand in the demonstration, I felt that, that I felt like I'm here with my brothers and sisters. It was very inspiring, and we were marching, and it was peaceful. But then when I saw the, the, the behavior of the police, I, I, felt like, I, fe I felt that I'm a terrorist in the middle of Tel Aviv. And as David said, th there were never, you could never see smoke in the middle of Rabin Square in Tel Aviv in demonstration. The, it, it never happened before. Let me show so, you. Yeah. yeah. Let me just show you, uh, Ashiga, uh, this picture here. Um, this is Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, meeting the soldier who was, became <laughs> internet famous from the viral video who was beaten up. And this is what your Prime Minister says, we must stand together as one against the phenomenon of racism to denounce it and eliminate it. When you saw that, were you convinced uh, about how genuine he was? Did you feel that, that this was maybe a, uh, a moment where attitudes would change in Israel, perhaps? I feel like this was a first step of solving the problem. In the end of the day, we have to remember Israel is democracy, and democracy by the nature is imperfect, and it's full of conflicts and problems. And what we see in the last week is one of these issues that is rising up. And what we have to ask ourselves is what the society, the government, is doing in, to solve these issues. And for me, seeing the prime minister meeting the uh, the soldier that was beat up, and knowing the the officials from the uh, police sat down with the protesters and talk about plan how to invest and how to solve this issue was a small step in order to the right direction of course all of the plans that we are going to do is going to take a long time but this is the right direction because first time in israel you have the real conversation about racism the real concept uh, conversation about what can we do in order to solve uh, to solve those issues and I feel like this is a great um, proof or a standard of democracy of Israel. So interestingly enough, in our online community, there's not much confidence in Israeli Prime Minister's ability to fight racism. We have Charlie here who tweeted in saying, Netanyahu has the energy and political clout to fight racism, but he lacks the moral integrity. And you have Rep Stones here who says, thinking Netanyahu can combat racism that's endemic in Israeli society is like putting a fox in charge of a hen house. Uh, Fentahun, what is your sense? I mean, we, we're clearly seeing that there is a widespread lack of confidence in the Israeli Prime Minister. You've met with him. What is your sense on how, his, how serious he is about this issue? Uh, what I said to the Prime Minister was uh, a few things. One, I told him, um, as he is uh, 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 almost uh, 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 building or preparing to establish his uh, fourth government, um, this is an opportunity for him to do anything possible, anything in his power to uh, bring about the change necessary that would uh, be um, granting equal rights and op opportunities for the Ethiopian Israelis in, in Israel. Mm -hmm. And um, he actually uh, promised us um, a few things. One, he will fight racism of, or in all its forms uh, within Israel uh, against anyone any Israeli citizen, and two, he also agreed 
or promised that he's going to establish an interministerial uh, committee that will be headed by the Prime Minister himself. Okay, Fenton, and, what's the uh, timeline for that? Just very quickly, because we're, 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 uh, we're crashing towards the end of this show. Uh, what's the timeline for, for this to happen? Well, when it comes to the police violence, he asked the chief of the police to give him a report uh, up until 30 days from today. Okay. And in a couple of weeks, he's going to establish this uh, interministerial uh, committee. All right. And he said he's going to handle it. And by the end of the term, he wishes and he wants to have some kind of improvement in the uh, area of uh, racism in Israel. Okay. David, jump in. What did you want to add? Yeah. We've had a couple people speak about the state of Israeli democracy, and I think it's important that we recall that in many instances it's not a democracy, it's an ethnocracy, meaning that rights and privileges are accorded based on membership in an ethnic group, specifically Jewishness. Now, yes, within Jewish society, uh, Ethiopian Israelis are treated worst on that scale. But we look to Benjamin Netanyahu to combat racism. Uh, an analysis, uh, outside analysis, would have to conclude that Benjamin Netanyahu is the inciter in chief of racism. The day before his election, on the day of the elections, he says Arabs are coming out in droves. Jews, you got to vote to stop the effects of Arabs voting. Well, if Arabs are equal citizens, what's the problem with them voting? We should encourage them to vote. Everyone should vote as a citizen. More to the point, how can we say we're going to combat color-based racism when at the same time he's promoting religious-based racism? You have in this country 50,000 African refugees, non-Jewish Africans, and the government has been promoting them as diseased, terrorists, criminals, rapists, calling them cancer. Benjamin Netanyahu himself comparing them to Ebola. With this kind of racial incitement towards non-Jewish Africans, is it any wonder that there's going to be some bleed also towards Jewish Africans? So Benjamin Netanyahu, is he going to all of a sudden combat the racism in the country? And what kind of racism is he going to combat? And what kind is he going to promote? And can that even happen? Ashika, just it's interesting because David is coming to this perspective from somebody who's not from the Ethiopian Israeli community. So he's looking at this from a big picture. Does anything that he say he's just said resonate with you? Absolutely not. Saying that Israel is not democracy is completely lying, saying Arab Israeli. You mentioned the fact that Arab Israeli have the right to vote. This is democracy where the minority has the right to vote. I'm not saying that Israel is a perfect democracy, but there is not a, do a perfect democracy. For democracy Why did the Prime Minister of, exhort yeah, against it? Wait, I listen while you're speaking. I will appreciate that if you listen when I'm speaking. Uh, that's it. Uh, and the fact I'm not agreeing and disagreeing about what We're the Prime Minister said. We're supposed to intervene said. all the time. Okay. That's the point of Israeli yeah. culture, it's, and that's the point of this conversation. Whatever David said, as most I could not, not agree more about the thing that he said. Uh, he took a lot of large issues and put it in the same bag and label it as racism because this is the way it's like easy for him. But every um, subject that he raised have a, have a larger issue inside of them and he cannot like just say it as like something small. Uh, that is the first thing. Saying Israel is not democracy is completely lie, not uh, proving it. Uh, I'm not saying Israel imperfect. Again, I understand there is there's a difference between saying there is a racism in Israel that is true. I cannot say otherwise. But Israel is not a racist country. Ethiopian, uh, Arab, Russian, um, uh, Ashkenaz people have the same right. The question is there um, uh, by the law, and we are not mm, discriminated I, by I the law. I don't agree. I don't agree with that. It's it's. Imp when a police officer can can stop my brother and not a white guy on the street it's not it's not equality when a judge see arab or ethiopian or someone from a, a north african origin comparing to white european origin they get they treated differently 
I'm can't asking, see. Okay, so uh, Efrat, the law, uh, Efrat, the law is, is, is equality, but the reality yeah. is but, like this. But also, okay, specifically so this is the, uh, in the immigration Efrat, of I, the Ethiopian Jews to Israel, let's they not, treated let's, in a different let, way. If I, so, if I may, let, if ladies, I may, ladies, just take a pause okay. for a moment because Fentahun is a little not, behind us. Fentahun, go ahead. Let's not forget. First of all, Israel. I agree with Ashagar. Israel is not a racist country. There is racism in Israel, but Israel is not a racist country. The reason for that is Israel is the only country that has uh, brought um, uh, Jews from, from Ethiopia. Um, uh, and and, and uh, the people ha the here have uh, accepted on Earth. Uh, the Jews and greeted them in a very, in a very, dignified, in a very dignified way. And also, what I'm saying is there is a cultural difference. There is um, uh, a lot of to in intolerance here in Israel. And um, having, having said that, we do, as uh, Ethiopian communities here, despite the hardship and the, uh, some of the racist acts that we are facing, which are very, very difficult, we need to take matters on our hands. This demonstration showed us, taught us something very, very helpful because these youngsters knew what we didn't know and they showed us what, didn't, what we didn't do before. They know the power of the, uh, the media, they know the power of demonstration, and after what they have done, the prime minister, the chief of the police, they have invited everybody and there is now a big progress as Thank we speak. Him. I'm just going to bring in Prime Minister. Al Samir. I think it's all about I'm, us taking something. advantage of taking advantage of the opportunity that we're in, and uh, you know, okay. implementing. Okay, I'm going to take the, the opportunity of Fentahun, you taking a breath, so I can bring in the online community. Go ahead. Man. So we have people who agree with Fentahun and Ashagur about basically racism existing in Israel, similar to any other country. You have Richard here who says, unfortunately, in all countries there is racist hierarchies. Look at the cops in Egypt the Dalit in India, the Berbers in Morocco. On the other hand, you have Walada Daniel here who says that Israel's case is unique. The whole state is racist and embodies the very essence of apartheid and ethnic cleansing. How can it behave in any way that is contrary to its essence? David, do you think that think Israel is racist in the way that any other country has racism, or is there something unique about Israel? I haven't traveled to every country in the world, so it's difficult for me to make comparisons like that. What I will say is that there's a there are several levels of discrimination. Obviously, there's nativism. People who came to a place first think they have more rights than people who came more recently. We see how that affects Ethiopians, sadly. We have classes, and people who have more money think they deserve more rights. Again, that affects. And we have color-based racism, white supremacy, pigmentocracy, and that also most harshly affects Ethiopians. But in addition to that, we do have Jewish supremacy and Jewish privilege, where people who are Jewish have more privileges People who are not Jewish or less Jewish, however you define that, have less privileges and less rights. And unfortunately, the that's the state. Like we have bias. just uh, this week, we have an entire village of Palestinian Bedouin citizens of Israel being completely wiped out and a Jewish settlement being put right on top of it. If that's not base, racism based on your ethnic group, I don't know what is. And we can talk here for hours about <coughs> all the ways that that happens. 50 laws in the Knesset. This isn't to be disputed, but we can talk about this all night. There is an extra level of racism here, and it's the way that these different systems of oppression, these different matrices intersect that makes Israel somewhat unique. Sadly, I don't think we can isolate one kind of racism, just the color-based racism, and somehow eliminate that, but leave the other one, the edifice of the other Jewish-based racism intact. So we have a couple of people disagreeing. I think it would be a good way to close. We have Imali here, who is optimistic, says, national concerns make Israel perceivedly unfriendly. However, that's not the case, and eventually immigrants are accommodated. On the other hand, uh, Abdullahi here does not see things getting better. He says, Israel is an intolerant society. These black Jews are clearly second-class citizens, and they will continue to be discriminated against. This is the moment where I'm wrapping up the show. This is the moment where if you're watching on TV, wow. you need to get online. Stream.aljazeera.com. Ashika, Ethret, Fentahun, and David will continue this debate at stream.aljazeera.com. Before I go, though, let me tell you about the next show. The United Nations is accused of having a culture of silence when it comes to allegations of sexual abuse in its peacekeeping missions. We'll be looking at that on our next show. See you soon.